I was working in Peru uh, between 2014 and uh, the beginning of 2016 in a museum that was made there about the period of violence that Peru lived between the 1980 and the 2000s, where we had two insurgent groups and also dictatorship. So as a result, there were a, a lot of missing people and a lot of all kinds of um, people affected by violence. Um, in general, all of those stories are still basically open wounds because there, there hadn't been really any process of justice. So that was one thing that for me was something important to learn that all the people that was affected by violence, they wanted to share their stories and they wanted to have their stories acknowledged and recognized by society and just to somehow make themselves be respected were difficult enough. Uh, so the labor or the task of mourning was something what, that was very marginal because the society hadn't created spaces for some kind of public or uh, social uh, practice of, of mourning. I think all of these um, experiences led me thinking of how to reconnect with with the practices of mourning that traditionally in most of the places in the world used to be also collective and uh, used to have a more respected place uh, within the cycles of society. And then in 2016, I started to apply to residencies outside of Peru because that work finished and I felt that I needed a break from Peruvian reality and history because that work was very intense. Uh, so that's how I ended up in Athens in 2017. It was a very nice residency because they didn't ask us to produce anything, but we could just uh, dedicate the time to investigate whatever we would want to. So I started to have conversations with people uh, that were involved in the occupations in, Sicta in Syntagma. Uh, so I was talking with artists and activists and writers and different people that were somehow engaged with critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And what surprised me was that in, the, in those conversations, it was very common for the people to say that, that what had happened basically was that people was depressed. Uh, but they would always say it in a way that was talking collectively. So nobody would say, I am depressed, but it was always like, my friends are depressed, the city is depressed, society is depressed, the country is depressed or something like that. So it was always like a collective diagnose. Mm -hmm. And so the question became, if we would consider a depression to be connected to an unresolved process of mourning, what could be the collective objects of loss in a context of crisis? and in which way art could somehow create ways of um, facilitating a, a collective process of mourning. So with these questions, I uh, wrote a proposal for a PhD that I am doing now. Um, and I, well, I started this PhD at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna, and I continued doing these interviews in, in Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea was to start uh, organizing different dynamics and workshops and, and, and situations to try out ways of uh, proposing uh, collective pra practices of mourning, departing from the words or the ideas that were discussed by the, the people that I was in conversation with. I think in, that, in one of these moments when I was feeling a bit paralyzed about uh, the, the need to go digital and all of these kind of things. I, I had a, a Zoom meeting with a, a woman from Peru that she is, um, a, let's say like a death doula. She wouldn't call herself like that, I think, but she works about these kind of issues. And I was asking her like, yes, like basically like how do we do now to connect like, uh, like I'm finding it very difficult to feel that I can actually like connect with the other and how do we do? And she just told me like, like we are doing now, like we are doing it, <laughs> like, you know, also like you and me now, <laughs> you know, like we're doing it, <laughs> like with what we have 
uh, what is available, we are doing it. And she told me like uh, that she thought that the question right now was uh, like, what does this moment ask from me? Uh, and it was very nice because it is a very simple question somehow, but at the same time, it's very deep. So in that moment, I, I really uh, tried to stay with this question. And somehow this question now is all the time next to me. So this is a, a way I'm approaching many things about um, research or work in general, like trying to really pay attention to, to that and stop and to ask myself, like what, what is this moment and situation or context uh, demanding from, from myself and how can I try to respond uh, to this? And I think this is um, like, a, like a simple but complex way of, of trying to locate oneself in, in the present and at the same time, not to try to be everywhere at the same time and not to try to do everything at the same time, uh, which is also difficult for the people that we are not living in our uh, hometowns. And also now that we want to be connected to everybody and also try to support everybody because we know that in everywhere people is really struggling with so many difficult things at the same time. But I think that we have to find a way to keep ourselves uh, somehow humble <laughs> and yeah. recognize what we are capable to do and also what uh, manages or what allows us to also stay somehow healthy <laughs> to begin with, like to be able to give a good version of ourselves when we are going to embark in some collective uh, project or commitment, especially regarding education that generally people think or or we are thought to believe that we need to have this or this or this preparation or diploma or whatever mm -hmm. uh, in order to achieve something one day and be able to share something one day but but the, i guess that the the challenge now is to find ways for everybody to share what we already know you know because of especially what is uh, somehow expressed through embodied practices, uh, which are the kind of things that we learned maybe while growing up, that we learned from our elders, that we learned from our moms and grandmothers, and a lot of things that are maybe more connected to oral history and daily activities than to what is um, in the books or theory or sanctioned uh, knowledges a lot of this luckily is happening now that people is i guess paying also more attention to these practices that come through uh, the domestic sphere and many practices that for a long time were considered a superstition or um, not proper uh, knowledge let's say no because it was not uh, rational enough or theoretical enough I guess we are in a very interesting historical moment now because we are capable of putting these diverse uh, epistemologies and traditions in dialogue. And I think it's a very nice opportunity for us to uh, allow ourselves as well to be these channels. Uh, those of us who have these experiences, especially of coming from diverse backgrounds and mixed race situations and uh, probably also living in places where we didn't, we were not born, I don't know, no, but I guess especially probably us have maybe these tools to, to translate all these worlds. And I think a, any pedagogical project that could be helpful today would be one that would train people to try to, to find these tools within themselves to exercise these these tasks of of translation in between worlds, no, like in, in between these worlds that are supposed to be disconnected, like uh, Western and, and non-Western culture and nature, uh, mm -hmm. death and life, or uh, human and non-human. So, so that's what I would like also to learn, no, how how to be capable of of translating these 
worlds um, while we try at the same time to save them from disappearance and extinction. Mm -hmm.